Hello, I'm Dr. James Atkinson. Thank you for joining me. Today, I'm going to discuss obesity. And specifically, we're going to talk about severe obesity and the treatment options being on operation. There are many treatments for obesity. Depending on what level of obesity you have dictates what the operation would be that would most benefit you. So we're going to discuss operations today. Later on, I'm going to go over obesity and the prevalence of obesity, what is involved in what causes obesity, the operations, and then what you need to do to be successful after the operations. So I'd like to start my discussion with um, the question, obesity surgery, and is it right for you? The reason for that is the operations are extremely effective. The operations are very effective. Someone can lose all of their excess weight and keep it off for the rest of their life if they make the lifestyle change, which we'll talk about as I go through this. However, it does take some change and it does take some effort on your part in order to be successful even with the operations. Today I'd like to answer a lot of questions that people may have about the operations, a lot of myths that are involved with the operations, and really most importantly what you need to do to be successful with the operations. So as we get started I'd like to first show you a map of the United States where over the last 20 years there's been a dramatic rise in obesity in America. We've all heard it on the news and in the newspapers and it's certainly out there but when you see it visually it's pretty impactful and this map of the United States from 1990 shows you that the as the colors change in the states obesity in that state is growing. Now there's three levels that we look at. There's normal weight, there's overweight, and then there's obesity and there's different forms of obesity we'll get to in just a minute but we're basically talking about obesity so in 1994 that was the way that the map of the United States looked as we go to 2000 or 1999 excuse me you can see the colors are changing and as we advance to 2004 the red shaded states are greater than 25 percent obesity in that state the most recent estimates by the Centers for Disease Control is that 33, one third, one out, of, one out of every three Americans is considered obese. So pretty alarming, um, certainly alarming. I'm going to talk about why that is and what we can do to, one, prevent it in some cases, two, treat it for those who have severe forms of obesity. So what causes obesity? I mentioned earlier, multiple causes, multiple causes. There's a bigger genetic link now than what we once knew. In the last 10 years, a lot of research has shown that genetics is very strongly linked to severe obesity. So we'll kind of talk about that, but there are other problems. Medical problems can cause obesity, but I'll show you that's actually the exception. It's obesity that causes the medical problems. I'll show you medical problems that are caused directly by obesity, which really makes it a very severe disease. Obesity is a very bad disease because it causes a lot of medical problems just by itself. And then also the environment. Certainly in America, we have access to everything. Food, relatively cheap. The problem in America over the years though has not so much the quality of food. We do have a pretty bad diet. The problem in America has been the growth in portion size over the years and we've become accustomed to these very large portion sizes that are very much, too much for the body. Americans on average can eat two to three times the amount of calories that the body actually needs. So if you have the genetics and the propensity to store calories as fat, then that's a big problem. So what we're going to talk about and what the operations in simple terms help us to do is to reduce the amount of food or the portion size to a more normal portion size which allows us to control calories. So I mentioned there's multiple things that cause obesity. There are three factors though that really equal weight and will dictate what somebody's weight's going to be. One is appetite. Two, and most of us are familiar with appetite. Second is something called satiety. The third is metabolism. So I'm going to discuss each of those three and how they play into weight and what we need to do to control them and how the operations actually help us to do that. So if we look at metabolism, metabolism is difficult because metabolism, there's two parts to it. There's calories that come in and the body's ability to store those calories as fat versus not store them and then there's the second part of metabolism which is the burning of calories which is the out part of the metabolism the in part of metabolism we don't really have a lot of control over you cannot control what your cells and what your body's doing and how it handles calories that's a genetic thing so we cannot control that side of it we can control calories and that's what we'll talk about with the other two factors on the other side, the metabolism, we can affect 
the burning of calories by, by exercising. That can help. That can help with weight loss, but we'll get into that a little bit more in a few minutes. Weight loss through exercise is, is very inefficient, but we'll talk about that again. I'll touch on that in a minute. So let's go back to the metabolism in the end. So if we look at the other two factors, appetite and satiety, appetite is the signal from the brain to the stomach that tells us we're hungry. Okay, everybody's pretty familiar with that. You know, some people have very large appetites and are very hungry. Other people, not so much. If you have a low appetite, you're not likely to eat as much because you're not hungry. If you have a large appetite, you may eat a lot. But appetite is very subjective. Appetite is, for some people, it may seem like they could eat a house. And other people, it's like they're not, a, a little sandwich fills them up. But let's move on to the second thing, say tidy. Say tidy is actually the opposite in some ways to appetite. It is the signal from the stomach back to the brain that tells us we're full, we've had enough. So if we look at those two and how they play together and then the three with metabolism, appetite, somebody can have a huge appetite. In fact, you can have somebody in the normal weight category that has a huge appetite, but when they sit down to eat, they eat half a sandwich, they're full. No, no, no damage done, no harm in half a sandwich. There's not enough calories in half a sandwich to really store as fat and to become a weight problem. So when you go to the other extreme of obesity into the severe forms of obesity, that satiety, which is the feeling of being full, the stomach full, sending the, the signal back to the brain that says I've had enough, that half a sandwich for that person doesn't even begin to satisfy them to say I've had enough. So it may take two plates of food, maybe three plates of food to have that same feeling of satisfaction. So satiety of the three factors that I mentioned is really the important factor because satiety, if we can control satiety, we can control weight. In the person with a huge appetite, they only had a little bit of a uh, half a sandwich. That's not enough to store as calories. So no harm done, they didn't gain any weight. In the severe obese person though, the satiety, if that's not satisfied, they will bring the calories in and then metabolism will store them. So the only way for us to successfully deal with metabolism is to essentially take it out of the equation. The only way we take it out of the equation is to not have the calories come in where they can be stored as fat. So again, if we can control satiety, then we can control weight. The, how we control satiety, that's where the operations come into play. For the most severe forms of obesity, that's where operations are effective and help. In simple terms, and we're gonna talk about the operations in detail, but in simple terms, what we are doing with the three operations that we're gonna discuss is that we are reducing the size of the stomach. What that allows for is a smaller portion or a normal portion of food to come in, fill the smaller stomach, send the signal back to the brain that says I've had enough, and then satisfaction is achieved and they're not hungry and so they eat less over a 24 hour period. Less calories means stable weight, controlled weight, normal weight. We'll talk about how all those factors play as we talk about the operations, uh, but essentially the operations are reducing the size of the stomach.